Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of the Nevada Pain Network, where we bring you anything and everything educational for pain management. Today the topic is avoiding surgery for degenerative disc disease. Well, here's a picture of a normal intervertebral disc, and it's composed of 80% water and 20% collagens and other proteins. And the analogy that I like to use with an intervertebral disc is a jelly donut. You have the harder outer covering, which is called the annulus fibrosus, and then the jelly on the inside, which is called the nucleus pulposus. There are some nerve endings on the outer edge here, so you do have some sensation, but the inner area has no sensation at all. The disc normally acts as a great shock absorber every time you walk, bend, jump, with water squeezing out and then coming back in. As discs start to degenerate, they lose water content, so no longer do you have the 80% water content, but you can start to lose height, and you can see that happening here, where it's starting to lose water, there's a healthy disc, there's the degenerative one, and it starts to bulge, okay? Similar to a flat tire. Also, when you start to get this degeneration with the water going out of the disc, you can get tears and cracks in this outer portion. 40% of the time, the intervertebral disc is cause of a person's low back pain. It might cause inflammation and also irritate adjacent nerve roots, so you can also get leg pain along with the back pain. So degenerative disc disease is a little bit of a quandary. It may lead to disabling pain that's daily, or it may be asymptomatic. So if you see an MRI with something like this, which is the start of a degenerative disc, which is darker because there's not enough water, this is nice and white because that's a lot of water, you can't say just from looking at this whether someone's going to have pain or not. 35% of individuals between the ages of 20 and 50 have degenerative disc disease, and they don't even know it. They're completely asymptomatic. So the treatment options right off the bat for someone who is symptomatic would be simply to start with over-the-counter pain medications like Tylenol and anti-inflammatories. For acute exacerbations, narcotic medication may be in order. Over the long term, this needs to be debated heavily because um, the risks can really start to outweigh the benefits of narcotics. There are topical medications such as lidocaine patches, um, anti-inflammatory creams, capsaicin, things like that. Um, also, for acute muscle spasm time periods, muscle relaxers such as Valium can be very helpful. Physical therapy, which includes active and passive range of motion, strengthening, stretching, uh, modalities such as ultrasound electrical stimulation, those can be great for relieving degenerative disc disease back pain. Chiropractic treatment may include manipulations along with TENS units, which can be helpful. It can change the way the brain perceives um, pain signals. This is a picture of a spinal decompression machine. Um, it's an intermittent spinal traction. It's computerized. Um, it's painless. It's non-invasive. And it can be extremely helpful for months at a time uh, for the pain from degenerative disc disease. It actually allows more oxygen and blood flow to come into the disc. Um, acupuncture has been shown in some studies to help with back pain from degenerative disc disease as well. When it comes to interventional treatments, um, you can see here actually an injection into the disc. This has been looked at in multiple studies with steroid medication and has been shown to usually provide months of pain relief. It doesn't fix the problem, obviously, but it can help. Um, trigger point injections are just tiny little uh, needles going into the back that can help with uh, muscle spasms and aching, and they can be very helpful. A lot of times when the disc is degenerative, it shifts excess motion to the back of the spine with facet joints, and that can cause degeneration there. So a person may benefit from facet treatments, such as a facet injection with steroid medication, medial branch block, um, or radiofrequency ablation. I'll show you that in a second. If the degenerative disc disease has caused um, inflammation uh, from tears in the disc, it can lead to nerve root pain, known as sciatica, so epidural injections can be very helpful. IDET treatment is known as intradiscal electrothermal treatment. That has fallen out of favor because multiple studies show that it didn't work very well, so insurance companies stopped uh, paying for it. Mild refers to minimally invasive lumbar discectomy. It's more commonly used when a patient has a herniated disc, but some pain doctors will use it to take a little bit of disc out and relieve pressure. Um, and that can help with pain relief as well. Here's a picture of a radiofrequency ablation. If the disc is causing excess motion and pain in the joints in the back here, it can um, help with uh, deadening these little nerve endings uh, nicely and lead to long-term pain relief. 
The outcomes from degenerative disc disease, uh, this is one study from uh, last year. Comparison of long-term outcomes for patients with back pain and a discography that showed the pain was coming from the disc, they call that a concordant discography, did not demonstrate a significant difference in outcome measures of pain, health status, satisfaction, or disability based on whether the patient elected for a fusion or non-operative treatment. So basically the outcomes were the same. Over 75% of the time, patients are able to achieve a satisfactory level of baseline pain um, with degenerative disc disease and avoid surgery. So over three-fourths of patients do just fine with non-operative treatment. Nevada Pain Network offers comprehensive pain management at several locations throughout Las Vegas, Henderson, Enterprise, and Summerlin. Over 50 insurances are accepted and over 50 treatments are offered with board-certified pain management doctors who have won the Patient's Choice Award five years in a row. The number to call for scheduling is 702-323-0553 and visit us on the web at nevadapainnetwork.com. I'm Dr. David Green with the Nevada Pain Network. Your pain stops here.